Hello and welcome back to Pete's Model Car Customs. I hope you all had a good uh, period of time, whatever you've been doing. I know my mate Tim over there in Throttle Power has been having a fine time. That is one wicked 57 he's just posted. If you haven't got that, you've got to link up to Throttle Power. He just gets some excellent foot footage from his local drag strip. You try five nationals, you can't beat it, mate. Brilliant stuff. Um, on top of that, I had a question the other day from uh, a new guy, a new channel. I want to give him a bit of a shout out. That's uh, Terry at the uh, Model Car Body Shop. And there's a link of Terry390 at Terry390. I'll put a link in the description, as well as over there, um, this chap does some very nice looking models, it's a, I think his name's D, he initials his comments D, D for disaster, I don't know whether he's a, a he, D for Diane, D for damnation, D for, D for dog, anyway, um, He's had a great idea, and I'll mention that later, but that's DVD DW Low Dash Graphics Low Dash Crafts. Long name, that, isn't it? Um, I'll bring that up so as you can read that properly. It is DVD W Low Dash Graphics Low Dash Crafts. And he really does turn out some nice models, honestly. Um, nicely detailed, often in scenes, quite a lot of them are weathered and uh, really realistically done. Uh, really, I, I, I do like his, his, his build. Um, DVD graphics there, and like I said, he's come up with a good idea. Something you'd notice with the styling of, of, um, of Cobras, really. Um, and that is that they look so hatchback. I mean, why wasn't there one? Was there one? I don't think there was. But I thought, while I'm still messing around with this a lot, I was looking at, at bringing in the window um, to a quite smaller window. I've moved it all. I've been messing around today. Um, bringing it down to the 73 Mustang size wing window so as I could then nick the, the louvered uh, rear window. But by bringing it in to a smaller diameter, it gives me a, a larger perimeter. That I, I'm thinking I'll take up his idea of cutting in a, a hatchback and bringing it all the way down to the to the trunk lid, but a whole a whole hatch. It might look kinky going along with the whole body conversion, and even if I don't get as far as cutting it out, scribing it in might look cool. So I'm looking at looking at that. Quite seriously, I think it's a bloody good idea. But the main, main um, topic of this discussion was, uh, or this video, was what Terry over there asked. And it was, what do I use for fillers? And a while back we were saying about the, the polyester type putty fillers, you know. And I, that's how much of the tube of this I've used. Hardly any. I've got the same with a, a Vallejo sort of polyester putty. I didn't particularly get on with it. And I have gone back to, I know I left him a message saying this, but Holtz Knifing Putty. Now this, this is a British company and I know they sell um, in Europe, but I don't know whether they sell in, in America. Um, but there must be a similar product in the States for filling small scratches and stone chips and the like, as it says on the bottom. There must be a similar product. And and it's a... a killer on the loose again. Just give it a little squirt. As you can see, I've got a crusty old knife that I... It's a, you know, tube... It air dries pretty blimmin' rapidly. Um, if I just grab this, I can... I've got a little seam down there. Where was it? The light was catching it a minute ago. 
You've got to move fast when using it because it does go off. You know, it sets quickly and might eat into your paint. But when you're doing it at this stage, it doesn't matter if it eats into the paint. It, you, you want it to grip. In fact, it'll eat into the plastic. But I want it to grip. So I, was like, I want to get in there, really. Um, some of that's coming back out. But I use um, often this, this chisel blade, as you can see. It's, it's well used. And I want to get the crest line back, which I'll work on later. I want to get the, keep the Coke bottle line. But I work rapidly with it. This stuff costs for a, it's quite a chunky tube. It's 100 grams, probably costs about a fiver. Whereas a similar um, modeling based product will be substantially more um, per weight. Also, I use a, a sprue glue, plonk that down, get that out of the way. There's the other knife I predominantly use, and that's a curved blade just to get in wherever I want to get in, but for the moment I'll leave that as that. The sprue glue I make and use, I've just in fact used some of it along the bottom there, because it is, this is a, a mixture, uh, right? Because I want to bind, I'm binding several strips together, and this sprue glue, because it's plastic and thinners and that, will, um, We'll do that. We'll, we'll, we'll eat the lot together and knit it all together. Um, and I make this with a mixture of this lot, which is all, all a large percentage of the swarf I cut off, any sanding I, I try to do at the uh, sanding plastic, I try to catch it in this cup. So as it all drops down into here, and then making a cardboard funnel, I pour, pour that into here, and then add um, acetone and cellulose thinners, more or less 50-50, um, to give myself a dissolved globular substance which is liquid plastic. In fact, now I've got that on there, I'll, I'll dab that in where we were looking. Um, so I just want to brace that up along there. It got very... I had about, well, I don't know, three different strips of plastic in that that area, and, and I've sanded down the inside a bit, and I want, need to build that area where you saw the sink mark. Um, but in minutes to hours I mean depending on how how well it's mixed if it, and and the actual mixture I mean I don't end up with the perfect science of it it's a bit lucky dip if it's if it's runny it will be hotter and I'll bung some more um, plastic in it dissolve more plastic into the, the uh, fluid but basically I, I consistently use a 50 50 mix of acetone that I do for the moment. I don't want loads of it everywhere. Um, but this is what I, I use predominantly, these two fillers. Apart from that, if I'm doing something like this, I want to try and not do filler. Try and get my panels to work to the most part to get plastic to plastic as a solid mass together. Um, also, I, I've got this sort of hard rubber and this went, went rubber sheet. Uh, this was either from a car mat or something like that, or a mud flap for a motorcycle. Um, it might have been part of a battery tray liner. Anyway, it's a very hard rubber, and I cut it down into little pads and then glue wet and dry onto it, and that can make, make a tool that will get me into a nook and cranny wherever a nook and cranny might arise. You know, same with getting a bit of shape there if you want to curvature. It, it won't last very long, but it doesn't matter. You just peel it off and stick on another piece of tape. It costs but another piece of wet and dry. It also gives me a flat, firm surface for any sanding I might be doing 
um, thus you know it, it's much better than just using your hand but you can get a nice curvature on it you know with a bit of force you can yeah, and get your curves um, I think that was about it all oh, the other thing was here and this is a mad invention this is on making a new Torino grill so I'm working out a sort of toast rack um, jig out of 0.25 uh, no, I mean, 0.25 mil by 2 mil strip in different heights of strip running along like a barcode with an angle piece at the end supporting it but I want to put in a plate as well to sort of you know give me an upright backing plate and then make this jig against that to give me um, something about maybe three inches wide toast rack idea um, of I'll make uh, a pillar at each end and a, and a couple of central pillars because I want to be able to vary the height that grills and sort of taper it. They're not going to be vastly bigger. They're just trying to include a taper in the front of these are a tapered grill, not a flat face grill, you know. But either way, I'll be able to lay in strips of, of uh, strips of strip into these coming coming at me and then put on a backing strip onto the back of those to tie them all together. Um, you know, like a uh, dink, 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 and then draw one across, glue one across. And and then that will be able to be lifted out of this jig and give me a Torino grill, hopefully. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you very much for anyone who's watching. Uh, thanks to all the subscribers. And thanks to all the model makers out there who make this world such a fun place to be in. Best wishes from jolly old England. Bye.